Praise the Lord. Final solution, brethren, I said, praise the Lord. You will not miss anything the Lord has ordained for you. Perfect provision. Full provision. Permanent provision. Final solution. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you for this hour. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the revelation. Everything you reveal will be ours. Every promise you give will be ours. Every provision you have made will be ours. I pray that none will miss any part of your provision. Bless your people, Lord. Young and old, new, and those who have been here before, everyone, ministers, members, bless everyone. Reveal to us what we have and help us to possess everything. In Jesus' name we pray. As we come to this session, we're talking on the privilege of every child of God, the sevenfold privilege. All these privileges they're given to us in capsules like promises. And every promise of the Lord will be fulfilled. Joshua chapter 23. Reading from verse 14. And behold, this day, I am going the way of all the earth. And ye know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one sin have failed of all the good things which the Lord your God speak concerning you. All are come to pass unto you. You didn't hear it. All are come to pass unto you. And not one thing failed thereof. Say good day, amen. As you read the Bible, you come to understand that those who really follow the Lord, they know quite a lot. And nothing comes to them by surprise. Look at this verse 14. And behold, this day, Joshua looked back to the time of his calling and to the promises the Lord has made unto him. One of those promises, every foot, every place, the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you. Not only that, all the days of your life, no man shall be able to stand before you. No magician will stand before you. No occultic man will stand before you. No enemy, no untamed animal, even a lion, will stand before you. As I was with Moses, in all the places he went, so will I be with you. None of the promises of God will fail your life. Look at verse 14. And behold, this day, Joshua, this great man of God, from the time he was called to the final day, he now declared unto them, Behold, this day, I am going 
the way of all the earth. He meant he was living the world. He was living planet earth. He was going to heaven. Can you think of a man who during his lifetime the promise the Lord had given him all through that period every day a day of victory every day a day of success every day a day of overcoming and he came to the last day he didn't see anything that was still to be done. He didn't see any enemy that was still to be conquered. He didn't see anything he was say, Oh Lord, am I dying today? Am I living as today? I need to pray a serious prayer. Whatever I should have done. I didn't do before I leave. Forgive me, nothing like that. What I shouldn't have done, I did. Forgive me, nothing like that. He came with boldness and courage. A man of purpose. A man of foresight. A man of vision. And he said, all Israel, listen. I'll be living today. I'm going the way of all the earth. This day, if some people knew when they are living, and it's going to be this day, they'll be jittery, they'll be shaking. I'm going to meet the Lord today. I'm going to face the judgment seat today. But he was happy. On your final day, you'll be happy. Yeah. You'll be confident. Yeah. There'll be nothing in your heart making you to linger, saying, Lord, give me a chance. Five minutes more, I need to pick this. One hour more, I need to pick that. When the time comes, you'll be ready. And now he told the children of Israel, and he said, You know, in all your hearts, and you know, in all your souls, that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you. Not one thing has failed thereof. God is a faithful God. And as we look at the sevenfold privilege that we have in Christ, you must understand not one thing will fail. Everything he has marked for you. You must walk with confidence. You must talk with confidence. You must testify with confidence. No man will stand before you. No enemy will hinder you. Your life will be a full life. Not a partial life. Not a so-so life. You will not be managing You'll not be sneaking on in the world. You'll stand like a fulfilled man. Like a fulfilled woman. And all these seven privileges, they'll be yours in Christ in Jesus' name. Number one, the possession of peace from the Savior. The possession of peace from the Savior. Are you looking at Ephesians chapter 2? Ephesians chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 14. 
Ephesians 2, 14, For he is our peace, who has made but one, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. He, Christ, is your peace. When he gives peace, nobody can make trouble. In your heart, there is peace. In your soul, there is peace. In your mind, there is peace. The moment you made Christ your Savior, it became your peace. And every day of your life, that peace, deep as a river, will be in your heart. He is your peace who has made both one and he has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Let me give you the normal, literal, immediate, primary interpretation of that middle wall broken down. Between the Jews and the Gentiles, the middle wall is broken down. Those Israelites, they add blessings. They add provisions that the Gentiles could not get into. But now the way is opened for the Gentile. The middle wall of partition is broken down. Now the Gentiles can all come in and Christ is your Savior. Christ is your peace. Let me now give you the next implication of that. Before you knew the Lord, and since you knew the Lord, there had been a wall of partition between you and the fullness of your blessing. Now we come to the threshold of abundant blessing. We come to the gateway of fulfilled promises and every partition between you and your declared benefit that partition is broken down your walls of Jericho that kept you from your possession that wall of Jericho is broken down in Jesus name you have peace because now you come to Christ, in your heart, there will be peace. In your home, there will be peace. Every fire burning in every family, all that fire is quenched. Sister, there's peace in the family. Brother, there's peace in the family. Romans chapter 5, reading from verse 1. Therefore, be justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. He is a father for his children. Number 2, the purity of heart through sanctification that's part of the benefit we have and this is not just for a few for the fiery for the zealous and for the people that fast that are fast faster than everybody else this is for you this is for me i said it is for me uh -uh. So you now remember, it is for me. You will not miss your privilege in Jesus' name. If you be seeking, searching, running after, trying to lay hold, and you didn't get it before, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. This is the moment. You have peace. You are going to have purity. We're looking at Acts chapter 15. 
Acts chapter 15, reading from verse 9. And he made no difference between us and them. Hold on. He made no difference between us and them. Here is Peter, the apostle, talking. And he's talking about Cornelius. And he's talking about Cornelius that he counted unclean. He counted him common, a Gentile. And in the minds of the Jews, the Gentiles are like wood made for fire. But now, Peter said, he made no difference between us Jews and Gentiles. What he gave the greatest of Jews, it will give the least of Gentiles. What does that mean? What he gave Abraham, the greatest of Jews, he'll give a Gentile the least among the Gentiles. What does that mean? Whatever the great, the greatest saint as God, he will give to the least of us here. Now, he said, he made no difference between us and them. What did he mean? We apostles, Peter, James, John, we stayed with Christ, we held him, we saw him, we ate with him, we even were in the same boat with him. We saw him directly. Now the Gentiles, now Cornelius, had never seen Christ face to face. And he was a Gentile. I even thought it was not right for me to go to him. That would be degrading myself. But now I discover that God has not made any difference between us who saw the Lord face to face and them who had never seen the Lord face to face. He has not made a difference. Whatever Peter got, you can get. Whatever John got, you can get. And whatever James and the others got, you can get. And look at that verse 9. He put no difference between us and uh, them. Who are they? Us, Peter, James, John, Luke, and all the others that were privileged in writing uh, the New Testament epistles and gospels. We, who had so much of the revelation and inspiration of the Spirit of God that were chosen to write the New Testament. And those who didn't write any word, Cornelius and his household, didn't have enough to even write a sentence. He made no difference between us and them. What those authors, inspired authors, got, you will get. And put no difference between us and them. Purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. Purity of heart through sanctification. It's yours. It's mine. It's mine. You'll not take it away from me. I will not take it away from you. You possess. You have. You will leave it out. The grace of God will be abundant in your life. First Peter chapter 1 verse 22. Seeing he have purified your souls in obeying the truth. Ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love 
of the brethren see that she love one another with what kind of heart? What kind of heart do you have? With a pure heart fervently. With a pure heart fervently. That's a privilege. That's an opportunity. He has done it. First John chapter 3. In First John chapter 3, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And then he goes on to say, Beloved, now are we the sons of God? When are we sons and daughters of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. Hold on. It's like you now, black Nigerian, black African. And you see the white Britain, British man, British woman, or American, white, with the air so different. And then you say, you know, I had a promise that I will be like that American. When you look at me, I will be like him. The people look here, you will laugh. But you know, Christ is more than British, more than American, and it's more than when he was here on earth. Now he is in heaven, glorified, beautiful, wonderful. And when Christ comes, you, what are you? You will be like him. And when the angels see you, they look at you, they look at Christ. They say, why are they so similar? Why are they looking the same? It's supernatural as well as superlative grace of God. It must happen to you. Beloved now, are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear. You cannot imagine now what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. You will get to heaven. When you get to heaven, you will not only see angels, you will see your Lord. You will not only see the believers who have gone ahead of us, you will see Jesus Christ. And when you see Jesus, you'll forget all the pain and all the trouble you endured in the way as you are going to the promised land. You will forget your sorrows. You'll forget your problems. You'll forget all the earthly circumstances that led you there. You will see the Lord. Verse 3, And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Purifies himself. That's my problem. How can I purify myself to the point that I will be like him? You don't understand the language. When you tell your son, your daughter, go and clean up yourself. You don't mean with his bare hand, with her bare hand, go clean up, go wash up. What you mean is... There's water 
you provided the water. What you mean is the sponge, you provide you have provided this more. What you mean is you provided the detergent and the soap. You provided everything. Go in there, clean up. And it might just take, just go in there, turn on the tower, turn on the shower, and be under that shower. By the time you come out of that shower, you are clean. What it means is the blood of Jesus is available. And the grace of God is available. Go purify yourself. Go stay under that blood of the Lamb. And go stay under that grace of God. By the time you go to that chamber, the chamber of prayer, and you come out, and you have been under the blood of the Lamb, under the grace of God, you are pure. Number three, the plenitude of power in the Holy Spirit. The plenitude of power, plenitude means the fullness. What you are receiving is not going to be partial power. And your contact is not going to be partial contact. Power. Power. You should remember many years ago when you were younger and even to carry a bucket of water was difficult. But now that you have grown older, carrying that thing, that's not a big deal. And I'm telling you after this final solution retreat, what you are not able to carry before you will carry with ease. When you lack power, and you lack strength, strength will come. Power will come. Whatever amount of power God has given to anyone before us, we will have. Look at number three. We're looking at Luke chapter 24. Verse 49, and behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you. It's coming. But tarry, wait, which ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. You didn't say amen to that one. Every cell in your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit, your inner man that was weak will become very strong. The promise of the Father, you will be endued with power from on high. And that power, what will it do? Will it carry Bucket of water, more than that. Will it scare up a violent, powerful man, more than that. Will it be able to push a mountain up where it was, more than that. Somebody help me shout the word power. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power. You understand, Christ does not expect any follower of his to be weak, to be a weakling, trembling for anything and for any reason. He expects that every disciple, every child of God will be filled with power. And when he looks at you and you appear to be trembling and shaking and every news that you hear from home will make you to tremble, it's wondering, I sent something to you, did you get it? I sent a registered mail to you from heaven. I put your name there, did you get it? 
You say, I don't know. That's what I thought. Because if you got that mail from heaven, it will strengthen every cell in your body and in your brain and in your heart. And you will not be trembling like you are trembling. From today, your time of trembling is over. You will be in charge. Every area of your life, an enemy will not be in charge. An enemy of progress will not be in charge. Nobody will have, will hold the key that leads to the gate, that leads to the possession of your life. Your enemy will not hold the key to your gate. Enemy of progress will not hold the key to your gate. You will hold your key by yourself. And when you get to the gate and you want to enter, to possess all your privileges, they will not say, wait for another week, the person holding the key is not around. You are holding your own key. Look at Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. He had given them that before he promised another higher power. The first one you get. The promised one you will have. I have. I said I have Acts chapter 1 Reading from verse 8 For ye shall receive power After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you And ye shall be witnesses unto me Both in Jerusalem And in Judea And in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth, you will receive power. You will be a witness unto Christ in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, where those religious personalities hold power and they say, if somebody does not come through us, he cannot get to anybody in Jerusalem. And they say, they are the final authority in Jerusalem. You will have power in that Jerusalem. You will go beyond those people standing at the gate of Jerusalem. And you will go beyond and reach the people inside Jerusalem in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 6. Reading from verse 7. Acts chapter 6 verse 7. And the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied where? You are not reading your Bible. Where? In Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of priests in that same Jerusalem were obedient to the faith. You are going to have power in that same Jerusalem. There are some other powers there. You will conquer them. And in Judea, and in Samaria, Samaria is where you have that one that said he was named Simon the sorcerer. And he already settled down. And he called himself, and he called him the great power. 
Philip went there and subdued that man. Anywhere you go, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, you will subdue them. In the uttermost part of the earth, Barnabas and Paul, Saul, was sent forth by the Holy Ghost. And he came to Paphos and he came to other places. And there was this one having a false name by Jesus. And having a false power, the power of sorcery. And while Paul was witnessing, talking to the deputy of that country, by Jesus, the sorcerer, wanting to withstand them, you will have power over them. And Saul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and he pronounced the word he overcame. The time has come for you to spend the rest of your life in peace, purity, and power. Enough of losing all your opportunities. You had this opportunity, you lost it because you were not sure of yourself. You did, I didn't have peace about it. You could have crossed that goal. I didn't have peace about it. You could have achieved that thing. I didn't feel I wanted to get involved. You know, I don't like conflict. And if I want to go there, and there's somebody standing at the gate, and then he stares at me, and he says, what are you looking for? Where are you going? I say, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. And then I go back. If you're always saying sorry to the enemy, how will you get to your promised land? If you're always saying, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. For an enemy standing at your gate, and you don't clear him out of that place, how will you achieve your final solution has now come? You have peace. You have purity. You have power. Number four, the privilege of healing from all sicknesses. The privilege of healing, divine healing from all sicknesses. You see, there are times. I don't know whether you have heard of this situation before. Somebody wants to do an exam, important exam, and that is the time he falls sick. He has read, he has prepared, she has read, she has prepared. At the point of taking exam, that's when he falls sick. Eventually, he managed, but he couldn't get the high grade he had prepared for. And eventually he comes out of school. And at the time he wants to go for interview, that's when he falls sick. Again, go in here, might miss his chance. You'll not miss your chance. He wants to get married at the time, the eve of the wedding, so sick. He couldn't, she couldn't even stand up. And eventually, at a time after getting married, at a time when the possibility is there to have children, is when you see, or she sick, and she cannot do anything with the husband. Seek, seek, seek at a critical time. That time now is over. Time of weakness, every time something good is about to happen, then infirmity, that thing is not ordinary. That thing that is not ordinary, an extraordinary power will remove it from your life in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16. In Mark chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 17. 
and these signs shall follow them that believe. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And these signs shall follow them that believe. I read that to you over and over for you to understand. We think we believe that verse. We say we believe that verse. But our understanding of that verse is when we are in church, when we are at a retreat and we hear message, we believe the promise of God. At that time, we think only the signs will follow us. That's not the limitation. Jesus did not put that limitation. You see, anywhere you are, if the sun is shining and you are walking on the street, you have your own shadow. Am I right? Every time, your shadow will be following you. You might be in Lagos. You might be in your city. You might be in the village. You might be in another country. It might be morning or noon or afternoon. As long as the sun is shining, your shadow will be following you. You accept that? The son of righteousness is Jesus. It's always shining. Always shining. And because you are walking in Christ, and you are walking under the sunshine of his righteousness, every time, whether you are in the city, you are in the village, in the morning, in the evening, in church, at home, signs will follow you. Today, the signs will follow you. When we disperse and you are going back home, on the way, the signs and the wonders will follow you. In your own house, because Christ is there with you, the signs will follow after you. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name that name works every time. Morning, afternoon, evening. At the gate of the temple in Jerusalem. Anytime, anywhere. That name is always effective. In my name they shall cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. There are people... They're saved, they're sanctified, they're baptized in the Holy Ghost. At that time, they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. They spoke in new tongues. After that, they abandon the new tongues. They take back the old tongue. I'm not able I am weak. I never get my prayers answered, old tongue. They're baptized in the Holy Ghost. And once they spoke in tongues, or once in a while in their quiet time, early in the morning, they speak in new tongues. But during the day, the tongues of regret, of defeat, of neg negative talk, the tongues of unbelief is what they speak during the day. And they say they don't understand why signs are not following them. When you speak those evil tongues, evil reports, and language of depreciation, that you depreciate yourself, signs and wonders don't follow that kind of tongue. You speak in new tongues. Powerful tongue, positive tongue, excited tongue, faith tongue, 
good things will happen to me today. Miracles will come my way today. God will send helpers to me today. I will be an achiever today. When the new tongue continues, tongue of faith, miracles will always follow you. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly sin, it will not hurt them. And they shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Number one, there's a possession of peace through the Savior. Number two, the purity of heart through sanctification. Number three, the plenitude of power in the Holy Spirit. Number four, the privilege of divine healing, divine health from all sicknesses. Number five, the provision of all needs by the Good Shepherd. The provision of all needs by the Good Shepherd. Provision in your life. Plenty, prosperity in your life in Jesus' name. Do you believe in prosperity? I believe in the provider. And if you believe in the provider, you believe in prosperity. It will provide all you need. It will provide all you need. I can multiply testimonies, but we will multiply your own testimonies. Look at Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 19. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There is no famine in heaven. There is no bad economy in heaven. There is no scarcity in heaven. And God lives in heaven. All you need will come from heaven. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory tell me by christ jesus romans chapter 8 we're looking at verse 32 romans chapter 8 verse 32 he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all your name is here. For us all, your title is here. How shall he not with him also freely give us, tell me, all things? He will give you all things. Put God to the test. That need you've been having in your life, and you have been saying, I'll live without it. I can live without that. And I can manage my life. Don't manage. Ask him today. Before long, that thing will come. Yeah. Number six, the prayer in his name by all his sons and daughters and servants. The prayer in his name. The prayer that all his sons, daughters, servants pray. The answer has now come. Look at John chapter 14. Reading from verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, who is that? He that believeth on me. I said, who is that? That's you. 
the works I do shall he do also. You don't want it. The works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my father. And then he says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Number seven is partnership and presence for all saints. Is partnership and presence for all saints. Look at Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, tell me. Tell me, is with you always, even to the end of the world. And everybody shout, yeah. all these sevenfold privileges are yours. It's not for you to claim them. Are you ready? Rise up and claim them. Rise up and claim them. They are yours.